All right, welcome. This is the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Uh, this is covering sections 3.A, which is for inertia and acceleration in the circular motion and gravitational section. All right, so let's read the scenario. Angelica is in a stop car at a traffic light when the light turns green and she accelerates. The first part for part A asks you to sketch and label vectors for velocity, acceleration, and net force on the car. Remember, this is a not a free body diagram. Okay, so let's label uh, the first things. Um, so it says, is Angelica is in a stopped car at a traffic light. So here it says uh, stop car so v equals to acceleration so v naught is equal to zero at the start so we can write v is equal to zero here because she's at rest remember this is at or if you don't like that at rest okay and then here uh and we'll add a traffic light when the light turns green and she accelerates so she accelerates okay this is the acceleration that is occurring because there is an acceleration we would say that there is also a net force okay on the car so here which way does Angelica body feels pushed? Explain in a short sentence why she feels that way. She feels pushed where? Forward, backwards, or she doesn't feel at all? Well, I would say here that she feels backwards. Okay, she feels backwards. Why? Well, here's the reason. She was or um, she was originally at rest. Okay. Then started to accelerate forward. Because her body Okay, she was originally at rest, then she started to accelerate forward. Her body, okay, was at rest. Okay, okay, and the car, and the car started to move forward. The forward of movement by the car makes her feel pushed back because that is where her body was originally originally I don't know how originally <laughs> uh, because that is where her body was initially at initially 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 um, at there you go okay she was originally at rest and started to accelerate forward. Her body was at rest and the car started to move forward. The forward movement by the car makes her feel pushed back because that is where her body was at initially. Good? All right. So let's go to the next part. Now, she appears to, she approaches a stop sign. She slams on the brakes, sketch and label the velocity, acceleration, and net forward on the car. All right. So here... She, uh, let's label some information here. She slaps on the brake. 
Okay? So, the brakes cause her to slow down. Okay? The, her car was still moving forward. So, here, this is the velocity because the car was still moving forward. Okay? Not that big. It's pretty small. Right? So, let me just draw it very small like that. Okay, then her acceleration was largely to the back, okay, because um, this is the applying the brakes. So the net force is going to be backwards as well, okay. This, the fact that the force is opposite to the velocity, here you could see that the net motion of the car is going to be backwards. So here, um, which way does Angelica body feels uh, pushed? I would say it is forward. Why is it forward? Because the car's motion was forward. The velocity was forward. Then the brake was applied, but the car was still moving forward. So Angelica's body was still moving forward, right? Um, Newton's first law of motion, um, the um, property of inertia, the object at rest will continue at rest. Sorry, right? An object in motion will continue to be in motion. So Angelica, Angelica was moving forward, so her body was still moving forward. Okay? Um, in which car now, which way is the car accelerating? Now it is backward because she is applying the brakes. Which direction is the net force on the car? It's backwards. The net force on the car is backwards. That is what allows the car to slow down. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Now, as Angela continues to drive, she rounds a corner at a constant speed. Sketch and label the vectors for the velocity, acceleration, and the net force on the car. All right. So, her momentum here is, uh, let's do velocity first. Her velocity is like this. Okay. All right. And this, the velocity here is tangent to the curve okay the acceleration is actually going to be inwards and the force is also going to be inwards all right okay so which way does angelica body feels pushed okay it would feel towards the outside of the circle you could say that or you can say if you don't want to say that towards the outside of the circle you could also say um you could also say tangent to the circle, okay, and remember the circle here is the curve, okay, you could also say that as well, that would also be an acceptable answer, there's, there, there are two acceptable answers here. All right. Which way is the car accelerating? We would say it is going where? It is going towards the center of the circle. Okay. In which direction is the net force? It is also because the acceleration is inwards. The um, the net force is towards the center of the circle as well. Okay, good.
All right, so that is your workbook solution. But let me explain to you some notes. Let me give you some notes, okay? All right. So the first thing that you want to look about in kinetic in circular motion is this idea. Let's say this is you, and you are re, um, revolving a ball around um, around you in a circle, okay? If the if if the string is let go or cut in this motion, um, where would the ball go or point to? Okay, the answer here, okay, is not A. Makes no sense. It's not B. It's not C. Does not curve. It's not E, and it's not F. And it's not G. The answer would be D. Okay, because let me write this to. You. Let me write it. If the string is cut, okay, the ball will continue moving in the velocity direction, okay, and that direction, the velocity's direction, um, before the cut is tangential, tangential, t tangential to the circle. Okay, there you go. All right, that's a. This is a very uh, neutral, I, um, a very common um, question and understanding of uh, motion in a circle. Okay, all right, so. Let's talk about um, this, okay? There are a couple of notes here that you wanna make sure you understand, okay? Let's look at this on the left-hand side. An object, a small object is moving in a circular motion. At each point, the instant, instantaneous velocity is tangential to the circular's path. Again, you see the acceleration is given as V2 or minus V initial, right? Over delta T, that means just D, um, change of velocity over change of time. Because velocity is always changing, there is an acceleration. Good? So, how did this formula came to be? Right? Remember how we found the um, change in velocity, um, the acceleration from change in velocity over change in time when it comes to slope? It's done the same exact way. Okay? But the difference here is if you would like to take a look for figure 5.2 is that it depends on the th um, de um, change in the delta. Okay? So, if you look at the calc, right, delta theta or the change in the arc, okay, is determined by this. Okay? So delta V is equal to your second velocity minus your first velocity minus your second velocity, okay? Notice as you take the limit of delta T to equal to zero, right? So the time, right? That's what it says here, okay? This, the acceleration that is caused in this scenario is called centripetal acceleration, or they call this also called the rat, um, radial acceleration. Okay, you could read this for you right here. Now that delta t becomes very small, approaching zero, okay, um, we can say that delta v points towards the center of the circle since a, by definition, is the same direction as delta v. It is two point out towards the circle. Therefore, the acceleration is called centripetal acceleration. Okay, it's called the center pointing acceleration. All right, it's also denoted by A R. Okay, so A radi um, radial acceleration is given as velocity squared over R. Right, it, it comes from right here. Good. All right, so some of you might also seen that this is related to your original acceleration as A is equal to um, summation of F over mass, okay? It's the same idea, 
right? This is a summation of the forces, okay? This is a sum of forces, all right? And this is the A system, good? This behaves the same way, all right? So these is the velocities in the system that is denoted by here. It's the change in the velocities. And this is the acceleration caused from the velocities getting changed, OK? So to summarize, an object moving in a circle of radius r at a constant speed v has an acceleration whose direction is towards the center of the circle and whose magnitude is um, a equals to v squared over r. It is not surprising that the acceleration depends on v and r. The greater the speed v, the faster the velocity changes direction. That makes sense. And the larger the radius, the less rapid the velocity changes direction. Okay? So a couple of things from here, if you would like to see, that the a depends on both the, v, the velocity and the radius. Notice what happens, right? So let me give you, if v doubles, what happens, right? So watch this, v doubles, okay, over r equals to acceleration, okay? Look at what happens, and this is squared. It becomes 4v squared over r, all right? What happens? If V doubles the acceleration, R, the radial acceleration quadruples. Good? That's the proof right there. All right? If, so the, um, the acceleration greatly in, um, increases. If R is doubled, all right? So let's take a look r doubles, so this becomes 2r, okay, ar becomes 1 half v squared over r. So if r doubles, the ar, radial acceleration, is cut in half, all right? And last, uh, a couple of more, good, that's just the proof for that. Um, oh, if r is halved, right? If r is cut in half, let's see what happens. A r is equal to v squared over r, right? And this is cut in half, so a r is equal to v squared over one half, right? We cut this in half, okay? But we never write divide by a fraction, so it is equivalent to just multiplying this by two, multiplying right that's the reciprocal so it becomes a r is equal to 2 v squared over r okay so if r is halved then a r is doubled okay all right so there you go those are uh, your solutions for the workbook your notes okay uh, how the um, tangential velocity works. Here's the proof of how radial acceleration works and how it's created. And here is some equation analysis um, using the radial acceleration. Okay, there you go.